Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a, another video on Payload CMS. I've been working with Payload CMS a lot lately for some current projects and just trying to push the limits of a little bit. And one of the things I did was I created a chat app with Payload as the background. So just a quick demo before I go into the code. So this is the chat application running in a Safari browser. And then here I have it running in Edge. And let me send the message here. Here is a message test. One, two, three. And you can see the message showed up here. And then here is a message from Edge browser. and see the message showed up here. And then the last one is to actually show a message being sent from payload. So let me get payload open, I'll log in to the back end, and my messages are in this message collection. So here you can see if I open up this last one, this is the message from the Edge browser, but let's just go back and create a new one. This is content from the CMS. And we will save it. And we see we get it updated here in my Safari browser. And we get it updated here in my Edge browser. Okay, so that's basically a demo. So here's the way I implemented it. So what I did was, well, first let's go back in here and you can see I just created a messages collection that keeps track of all of them and then also I needed users. So there's a default user collection that I have. So those are my two collections. But if we go back over here and we look at the source code, let's look at my message collection. We can see that, well, I set the default access. So I'm not dealing with that just now. This is just basically proof of concept. And you can see that we have here this endpoint extension. I'll touch on that in a second. I just want to touch on the fields. So nothing magical here. I just have a sender and a receiver, which is a relationship to the user object, the content, which is the text here, and then a timestamp for the message, which I, actually, as I'm thinking about it, I don't really believe I need it because it should generate an updated add and a created add on its own. The interesting stuff is going on inside of this SSE messages. And SSE is for server side, let me make sure I get it. Server sent events. And so this is built into the browser. And basically what it says is traditionally web pages send requests from the server to receive new data. But with server sent requests, you can basically connect through this um, events API. So if I look at the server sent events, this event source API, you can connect to an endpoint and get basically sent events to you from the server. So that's the trick that I used here. So if we go back, so let's look at my SSE messages endpoint. So now, so first of all, this endpoint now appears as a, if I look at my application, my client, you can see I'm connecting on the same payload API messages, but I created a new SSE endpoint. That's how I'm connecting my event source. So if I go to my SSE messages, I documented this heavily, courtesy of Cursor to kind of make it very clear to you. So I have this endpoint and it's a Git. And I'll just kind of read through it. So what I'm doing is here is I'm setting up a way to abort the connection when it gets terminated. I need to be able to stream the content back to the endpoint. I get a timestamp at the last time the data was sent. So this I use this to determine what new messages to be sent. And then I have this keep alive, which keeps the connection alive. And then what this poll messages does really, it just looks for, unless the signal has been aborted, it just uses the payload API to search the messages collection and find any messages that were added since the last time a message was added. Sorts it. I limit it to only 10, probably can bump that. But like I said, it's just a demo. And then I use the depth and the populate so that I can get the email address of the users that are associated. I guess so I get that returned in the payload. If there's messages to send, get the timestamp 
And then I use this await writer write to send the messages back through the stream that I created to any of my listeners. And then down here, this is on a board. I clean up my keep alive. I clean up my message interval. I close my writer. And then this is the, this is the response that I send. Right now, I just have it accepting requests from anyone. And that is basically what this SSE messages does. So basically, any time the poll, the interval gets hit through this interval, pulls the messages, it writes them, and it gets sent back down to anybody that has reached out to this endpoint, SSE. And that's all we've had to do on the server. And then on the client, let's hop back to the client. This is just a regular v React application. When the component starts up, we connect with our event source, and we get our event source, and then we're just listening we create this event listener to listen for messages that come down. We create this ping event. We have our on error. If we get an error, we just close the thing. Also, retries and reconnects, according to the documentation, are managed by this event source API. And then what happens when we get a message sent, since I'm sending kind of a connect messages, the only message that I want is if there's no type associated to it. If there's no type associated to it, then that means it's data. And then I get my data. This is me to make sure that I keep my data clean. I was running into this error on refresh, on a hot reloads, it was duplicating content. So basically what I do is I use this set to make sure I get only unique messages. But basically I take the messages that I get in, filter out to get the unique ones, and then I add the new messages, append the old messages, return that object for the set messages and then down here in set messages all I'm doing is looping through them and rendering them so anytime so just kind of to go back through the flow again we connect our endpoint with this event source we add our listener and we're listening for messages back here inside this handler that was created we have this poll message running and anytime once the uh, interval is up, it calls the poll message, searches the messages, see if there's anything that's been updated since the last time we pushed any messages out. If there is, we get them. We save our last timestamp. We write to any, any of the connections. So any of these event source connections that are out there will then get this message, parses the data, sets the message, and renders the UI. And that's pretty much it. Now, I know there's a bunch of other ways that this could be done. You could use WebSocket, you could do polling from the client side, but I just thought this was an interesting way, A, to showcase what can be done with Payload and kind of to show a new API that's built in a browser I was unaware of. So full source code is provided in the GitHub repo. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this. Thanks, bye.